something a little different this week, or it's different than what I've done before. And Dave Jones does it all the time, so I figure if he can get away with it, so can I. So what's going on here? I, uh, um, okay. Um, so the city locally a couple of times a year does a free giveaway weekend. Basically you take stuff that that you don't want anymore. And rather than shopping it to the thrift store or the dump, you put it out in the curb with a sign on that says free people come by, sort through it, take the good stuff, leave the crap behind and you end up going to the dump anyways. And then for weeks afterwards, people forget that it's not every week and put random crap out on the curb. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. A few weeks ago, it was this monster here. Um, looks interesting. Uh, no video on the motherboard, no video card, no drives in it. But let's see what it does have, shall we? Welcome to the floor of my space here. So let's see what's in this beast. Okay, what do we got? Okay, there, a bit of zooming and stuff. We got a bag of assorted brackets. Um, those are the drive sled brackets, I'm thinking. Got here cooling, presumably that they took off their GPU when they took it out. Power cord, never have too many of those. A uh, couple of SATA cables. Ah, okay, the power supply. See if you can see that sideways though it is. Turn your head, I'm not going to do this. Uh, it is a Cooler Master RS600 PCAR E3. So it looks like a 600 watt power supply. Cooler Master is a pretty solid brand. Not upset about that. Um, what do we got in here under the fan? Did they leave the CPU in it? Oh, they did. Well, that's cool. Bit of dust on the edge of the heatsink schmoo. That's neat. No RAM in it. Uh, MSI heatsink over top of something or other down there. Uh, where is the model number? Um, oh, there we go. MS7599 MSI. Uh, version 4.0. Oh wait, MSI 870S-G46. Okay, a few things to go and look up, I guess. Cooler Master Extreme Power Plus 600 Watt is what comes up with that part number. Um, what do we got down here? Oh yeah, so we knew it was 600 Watt. Got uh, motherboard and CPU connections, PCI connection, five, um, no, six SATA connectors, one floppy connector, woohoo, and three for random four pin peripherals, which would mostly be either old school hard drives or uh, what else, uh, DVD or CD drive or something like that. That's cool. Um, and there's how the SATA connections are and the other power connections are laid out. That's kind of slick. Uh, so what do we got? There's the current reading. So 3.3 volt, which is CPU, is 25 amps. Whoa! 5 volts is 30 amps. Plus 12 is 18 amps. And another plus 12, which is also 18 amps. Then the negative voltage is uh, 0.8 amps for neg 12. And... 2.5 amps for 5 volt standby. Okay, so this thing doesn't have any other negative voltages. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, all standard, standard, standard stuff. 47 to 63 hertz, so it can, and pretty much, yeah, okay, so it can work in most countries. Uh, all the connectors, yada, 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 okay. 
did a bit more searching around before I found this page and I found a manual that had a copyright date of 2008. So, but I'm assuming that they made this for a few years. Let's see what we can find about the motherboard. MSI 870S-G46. Uh, it says it's military class, which is interesting. It can handle up to 6 gigabits per second on SATA. It has audio, da 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 all this stuff. Let's just go straight to specs. I don't care about the marketing wink. AM3 socket. I don't have to buy a CPU because there's already one in there. Um, takes AMD 870 plus chipset. Uh, oh, sorry. It's got the AMD 870 plus chipset. Uh, it takes DDR3 memory for DIMM slots. Yeah, we saw that up to 32 gig couple of PCI-16 slots, PCI-E slot, and, and an EX-1 slot. 6 SATA uh, 3, it can handle, oh neat, on board it can do RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10, uh, 10, 100, 1000, LAN, I like anybody's going to be using 10 anymore. It has a TPM module, boo hiss. I'm still going to see if I can get Linux running on it, despite that. It has USB 2 ports on the back, a whack of them. It has a bunch of audio. It has an actual serial port. Ooh. Okay. And the other thing that I found when I was searching for this is I found a uh, manual with a copyright date of 2011. Which is okay, because that puts it newer than the laptop that I'm using in my shop. Which is this one. A compact, a Hewlett Packard Compact. Uh, 6910P from mm -hmm, around 2007 vintage. Um, so it's uh, got a dual core 2 gig. Um, it's got 1 gig of RAM in it, um, even though it can have 2. This is the cheap version. So it's ancient and slow, and I'm hoping that my curb find is going to be an upgrade to my shop computer so if i'm gonna get this puppy up and running i'm gonna need a few things from my stash let's see what can find in here keyboard yeah one of those um let's see the cables got ram yep need one of those um what else we got in here video card yep Is that a better keyboard? What's the connector on it? Yeah, that'll do. Um, oh, a monitor. Right. Uh, I'll use this one here. And a... Yeah, I need that too. Okay, it said... It took DDR3 RAM. Let's see what we find in here. Uh, PC100, DDR3, another DDR3, 128. Don't think so. Um, PC3, so many different kinds of RAM. Uh, DDR256 Meg, DDR, no. And another 256 meg. Okay, huh? Well, what are these two? These two are 4 gig each. That's plenty. And we need a video card. Um, these both the same. Yeah, they look like it. Okay, what are you? GeForce 7200 GS 512 meg DDR2. Close enough. This isn't going to be a screaming gaming machine anyways. I think I'll just leave the RAM out for the time being. And just throw the video card in just so that I can see if it even posts. Let's see. That looks like a good candidate. Close enough for what we're doing. Get some power in here. Okay, I'm going to 
some hat pins there. Oh, wait, I guess I should connect. All right, connect that up to the VGA connector. Okay, so that's on. I guess there should probably be a power switch around the front side somewhere. Hang on, this might bump it. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, light. Beeps. Three beeps. And what it's seeing on the monitor. It's saying no input signal on the monitor. Okie dokie. That's interesting. Just, there's a reset button on the front side there too. Hmm. The fact that a BIOS beeps is a good start, but what does three beeps mean? Anybody know? Three beeps means bad memory. Hmm, maybe I actually need RAM in it. Okay, fine if it's going to be like that. I'll put some body RAM in it. Looks like the blue ones are the ones that were used by the previous owner, so that's the one that I'll use. Should I throw both sticks in? What the hell? There, okay. Hmm. Power. I'll get the monitor back down here. And there's the power button. Now what? Got CPU fan, we got some lights down there. These things are happening. Nothing on the monitor. Didn't beep. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Time for tinkering. Much later. Okay, some time has passed. As a matter of fact, it's tomorrow. And I did something that I don't usually do. RTFM. And I found that... Remember I said it looked like they were using these memory slots, so that's the ones I'd use? Wrong. The memory slots have to be used in order. And they are labeled down here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1 is closer to the CPU, 4 is over there. So all I had to do was move my RAM over. And it works. Check this out. Look at that! Woohoo! Well, you can't see that. It's saying stuff on the screen. Specifically, it's saying that it can't find the boot device. Alright, well, we can fix that. And you're getting glare off that, so let's prop that up on that. Can you read it now? Good. So, for a boot device, one live USB. Power on with the USB drive in place. Military class. Woohoo! It's Ubuntuing. Okay, this is going to take a minute. go. That's a sign of progress. Well, would you look at that? And the little mousey guy here works. Let's just go into try, which will select the live, uh, the live load rather than try to install it on my non-existent hard drive. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting here, give it some Ethernet. Oh, there we go. And desktop. I'm going to plug this Ethernet in to my router and hope for the best. Aha! Connection established. That's what I like to see. Okay, so. This is weird because I'm sitting at 90 degrees to this thing. 
Okay, so does it work? Whatever. Yes, it works. The network works, the computer works, the graphics work. Let's see about this computer. We have 7.8 gig of memory. We have an AMD Phenom uh, times 4 or oh, Phenom 2x4 955 processor times 4 cores. Um, Gallium graphics, yeah, that's the uh, card that I threw in, whatever. It's 64 bit, and the RAM disk that it's created is about 4.2 gigs. Actually, no, that's not, that's the free space on my uh, memory stick, which is showing up over here, which is also the live load. Well, that is cool. Now, all I have to do is find me a cheap hard drive preferably without too many errors on it and I am set for a shop computer which is much better than the uh, than the laptop um, where's my specs on the laptop it was a 2 gig uh, 16 no 1 gig of RAM and 2 gig uh, speed this one is a nice 4 core with 8 gig of RAM I like that and all for so far, the princely price of nothing. Well, after a few false starts, that turned out to be a fine, uh, not exactly a dumpster find, but a, a curbside find, a freebie. I will take it. Thanks for watching. If you got any comments, leave them down below. Um, as always, I appreciate your uh, your feedback and your time. Talk to you later.